Good morning, folks. We've got a full slate of news and events up today. We're starting with our star here in 304 Angstrom showing ionized helium, but let's go to the other views at spaceweathernews.com and begin eyeing the large coronal hole turning through. The bright sunspot ahead of it has silenced, but watch the left side. A new incoming active region released a little CME as it hit the limb, fields interacted, and the plasma pushed out. It was visible on most wavelengths, including 211, where we fully realized the breadth of the coronal hole. Phi angle in the solar wind still not quite pointing sun to earth, probably less than 24 hours until the solar wind impact from it. Top weather alert today is for a cyclone that is already pounding Thailand and which will continue westward through far northwest Indonesia and north towards greater Asia. We also have a story many layers up at the polar vortex. Solid split can be seen along with the counter flow over northern Alaska. We'll begin science news aesthetically. The simulation was used to study how a merging dwarf galaxy could kick solar systems out of the galactic fray. It's worth noting that might not be possible in electric and plasma universe paradigms. We do have more from New Horizons. We're learning that there are no rings or moons around the object. It follows the orbit rather than contact motion. Then we have to wait a week because New Horizons is now behind the sun and cannot transmit to us. January 10th, more science comes in. So I'm sure many of you have heard about the claim that they have measured the effects of dark matter. They have not. Here's what happened according to their paper. They looked at the star formation in small galaxies and then inferred infall parameters from clustering and now claim that those galaxies without central dark matter are like that because the particles were heated up and pushed out. By the way, that makes them much more interactive than dark matter is supposed to be. But really, the crux is that the power they are measuring is electric and magnetic forces associated with star formation, and they had to make some very liberal assumptions about the infall. Now on to something real. We remember the recurring nova, T-PIX, shotgun blasted solar system. Well, how's this for timing after last night's solar micronova video, a detailed study of T-PIX's latest eruption in 2011. Here we can see how the ejected material is split into two donuts, toroids stacked on top of one another, and then over time, about three years, fading into the Z-pinch. Folks, hard to rule out that electricity along the stellar filament lines triggers those nova. And on that same note, if you didn't see last night's video, this will not make any sense. But just look at the real color of the lunar far side from the first Chinese probe to go, first lander of any kind on the far side. And they plan to do exactly the type of studies on the soil that would reveal the effects of a solar nova. How's that for timing? Folks, Douglas Vogt will join us at Observing the Frontier 2019. He's got tons more information, and the Sunday Nova panel will also include myself and Dr. August Dunning. A video describing everything else that will be at the conference is linked for you below. If you didn't see last night's video, it is part five of Earth's catastrophe cycle and the top recommendation today. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.